And now it is my pleasure to invite His Excellency Mr. Abdullah Shahid, President of the current General Assembly, to share his opening statement with us. Mr. Secretary General, Excellencies, dear friends, thank you for the opportunity to address the high level dialogue on energy. Allow me to be direct. Energy is critical to both our recovery from the global pandemic and our efforts to tackle climate change. It is quite literally a win-win situation. First, the COVID-19 pandemic has underscored the stark divide between energy haves and energy have-nots. Much like the digital divide, where some of us were able to switch to remote work, while others said no alternative. The energy divide is indicative of deep, deep inequality. For billions, energy is a luxury. If we are to recover from this pandemic and reignite socioeconomic growth, then closing the energy divide is essential. Communities and businesses need reliable access to energy if they are to ensure access to health, education, and jobs and livelihoods. In this way, energy access is very much an SDG accelerator. As progress on this one, SDG can speed up progress across the entire set of 17 goals. Second, there's simply no path to carbon neutrality or maintaining temperature rise at 1.5 degrees without a broad, global, and comprehensive transition to renewable energy. Today, there are around 760 million people who are currently living without electricity. 2.6 billion people still relying on harmful fuels for cooking. We need to address this to ensure everyone will be able to access to clean, decarbonized energy by 2030. But to do this, a political commitment at all levels is a must. Excellencies, dear friends, a substantial increase in clean energy finance is essential for all countries, but particularly for LDCs, LLDCs, and SIDs, where energy poverty equates to poverty full stop. International public financing flows to developing countries in support of renewable energy reached 21.4 billion US dollars in 2017. This is a twofold increase from 2010. However, it is estimated that only a small proportion of this funding reached the LDCs, LLDCs, and the SIDS. Financing for clean cooking is even more worrisome. Of the US dollar 4.4 billion needed, only 32 million US dollars has been made available to achieve universal access to clean cooking. Innovative multi-stakeholder partnerships play a key role here in supporting countries in special situations to ensure that no one is left behind. For donors, investors, and national governments alike, investing in achievement of SDG 7 and the Paris Agreement is low-hanging fruit. The benefits are immense. There are few investments that offer as much return. It is a known fact that strategic partnerships and so-called energy compacts are key mechanisms to drive leadership and urgent action on SDG 7. I encourage all member states and the UN system to continue pursuing these options. As president of the General Assembly and under the theme of a presidency of hope, I'm pleased to note that both climate action and sustainable recovery from COVID-19 are amongst our five rays of hope. As stated at the outset, without access to clean, renewable energy. I therefore intend to liberate the General Assembly to its fullest extent to support efforts towards SDG 7 and SDG 13. This includes a meeting next month ahead of COP26 on raising ambition, political will, and capacities, including a renewable 
including re on renewables, as well as a super session on the environment later in the session to emphasize the interconnected environmental issues we face. Excellencies, I look forward to working with you in this regard. And I thank you. Thank you so much, President Shahid, and thank you for that reminder that energy access is one of the key SDG accelerators. As we were hearing earlier from the Secretary General, SDG 7 will only become a reality with the support of multiple stakeholders, and that includes the private sector. 